The day we're taking a look at these MLB matches, which are happening on Wednesday, June 29, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, you can get 30 extra betting picks all the way up to 360 extra betting picks per month. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting picks that ends up costing you a lot of money. Join the high stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. So make sure to watch our videos till the end so you don't miss any of our picks. Kansas City Royals vs Texas Rangers. Our team pick is. Texas Rangers for the win. And here is why. Kansas City lost their third straight and their fourth in the last five games as they were drubbed soundly in the opening game of the set. The Royals entered Tuesday in the basement of the Isle Central, 14 games behind the Twins for the top spot in the division race. In Monday's opener, Kansas City got two hits each from Whit Merrifield, two runs, two RBI, and Andrew Benintendi, RBI, though that wasn't enough to earn the victory. The Royals were blanked over the final seven innings to wind up with the loss. Chris Bubik, 1-5, took the loss on the mound as he allowed seven runs, four earned, on nine hits with three walks and two strikeouts over 4.2 innings of work. Texas won for the fourth time in six games, as the Rangers' bats carried them to a victory in the opening game of the set. The Rangers entered Tuesday second in the Al West, 10 games behind the Astros for the top spot in the division race. On Monday night, Texas got three hits from Jonah Heim, run, while Cole Calhoun, two runs, two RBI, Mitch Garver, two runs, two RBI, Nathaniel Lowe, run, RBI, Leody Tavares, run, two RBI, and Charlie Culberson, each added two hits in few in. Garver hit his eighth homer of the season in the victory. Martin Perez, 6-2, struggled early, but picked up the win, as he allowed four runs on seven hits, with two walks and six strikeouts over six innings of work. Both teams entered Tuesday's game under .500, but the Rangers have played some decent ball of late to maintain their hold on the second spot in the Al West race. Dunning was solid in his last start and ended up with a tough no decision because the bats were held in check by the Nationals. Greinke picked up the win in his last start, which now gives him one on the season. The 38-year-old isn't missing a ton of bats, and that's going to be problematic as the Rangers have been above average offensively on the road this season. Give the upper hand to Texas as they pick up the victory on getaway day to claim the series. Our total pick is. Under 9. And here is why. Texas starter Dane Dunning is coming off an excellent outing, in which the right-hander allowed one run on seven hits across six innings. Kansas City Royals starter Zach Greinke is also coming off a strong outing after allowing one run on three hits in six innings. Therefore, the play here is under. The under has cashed in 18 of the last 26 that Texas has played in Kansas City and in 38 of the last 58 overall between the Rangers and Royals. Arizona Diamondbacks vs San Diego Padres. Our team pick is. San Diego. For the win, and here is why. San Diego went on an excellent run during the first half of June, winning 11 games in a 14-game stretch. The Padres have lost six of their 10 games since then, after dropping three out of four against Philadelphia over the weekend. They wrapped up a seven-game homestand and are now going to be on the road for six straight games. San Diego remains in contention for the National League West crown, sitting 1.5 games behind Los Angeles at the top of the standings. The Padres are firmly in the playoff picture, having 4.5 games of cushion at the top of the wild card race. Arizona was able to battle its way to above the .500 mark on May 24, but it appears as if the Diamondbacks are not going to get back to that point this season. They have not won more than two consecutive games in more than a month, dropping to eight games below .500. Arizona was swept in a three-game series at San Diego last week, before losing two out of three to Detroit over the weekend. The Diamondbacks snapped their five-game skid with an 11-7 win on Sunday. They are in fourth place in the NL West, trailing Los Angeles by 13 games. Their wild card hopes are slightly better, as they are eight games back of the final spot. There might be some warning signs with both of these starting pitchers, but I would much rather back San Diego's lineup than Arizona's. The Padres have an outstanding lineup, while Arizona has the second-worst batting average in baseball. Bumburner has also been struggling of late, including last week's outing against San Diego. He has lost six of his last seven decisions and is facing a team that just swept Arizona last week. Clevenger continues to go deeper in his outings, so that is a good sign for San Diego moving forward. I'll take the better team at a pretty cheap price on Wednesday afternoon. Our total pick is. 
under and here is why. Mike Clevenger has been pitching pretty well this season, according to his baseball save page, as he is in the 71st percentile in average exit velocity. He is throwing a lot of strikes as he has a 25 strikeout percentage so far this season. Clevenger throws six different pitches, with five of them thrown at least 11.2% of the time this year. His heater has been doing well as it has a .120 batting average and slugging percentage so far. It will be interesting to see how he pitches in his second start against a team this season for the first time. Madison Bumbrenner has struggled significantly this season, according to his baseball save and page, as he is in the 5th percentile in whiff percentage. Hitters are squaring up his pitches as he has an 8.2 barrel percentage. Mad Bum has 5 different pitches with 4 of them thrown at least 11% of the time. This will be his third start of the season against the Padres, as he is 0-1 in 7 innings and allowed 7 runs, 5 earned, on 10 hits with a hit by pitch, 4 walks, and 7 strikeouts. The Padres are not doing well as both shortstop Fernando Tatis Jr. and third baseman Manny Machado are out with injuries. Jake Cronenworth is struggling as well at the plate, so the offense of San Diego has been struggling throughout this recent stretch. These teams also do not have a lot of power, as Arizona is tied for 11th in the majors with 86 homers, while San Diego is 24th in the big leagues, with 63 long flies. The under has hit in 5 of the previous 7 games between these teams, so go with the under to hit here. San Francisco Giants vs Detroit Tigers. Our team pick is. San Francisco Giants, minus 1.5. And here is why. Rony Garcia, 4.57 ERA, has thrown his way to back-to-back -back wins on the mound over the Arizona Diamondbacks and Texas Rangers. It's a solid momentum builder heading into Wednesday's showdown on the road with the Giants. But the offensive challenge will be far greater in San Francisco. The Giants are averaging the seventh most home runs per game, 1.25, with the eighth best isolated power, 0.164. A lot can go wrong if Garcia isn't on his game for this matchup. Now, they'll get another crack at a Tigers team with the third worst record in the American League. There really are no excuses with this game taking place at Oracle Park. Sure, the pitching hasn't been as dominant, but then again, no other team in the league is averaging less runs per game than the Tigers this season. This is a real chance for veteran Alex Wood to make some noise on the mound. He got wrecked by the Braves in only one inning of work in his last outing, with four hits and six earned runs. There's no better opponent to put on the blinders and move forward against than the Tigers. It hasn't been all sugar and rainbows for the Giants on the mound, but at least the offense is still somewhat working. They're swinging with serious power at the plate, and they'll be running into a Tigers team that has a tendency to bleed runs. This is one of those road games where Rony Garcia will run into some real trouble against a Giants team in desperate need of a turnaround series. All it takes is one big hit for the floodgates to open against the Tigers, who are entering Wednesday's game with a 10-22 record on the road, as of Tuesday evening. Alex Wood can find solace in the fact that he isn't pitching against the Braves in this matchup, and he'll be back at Oracle Park, where he has had his best luck on the mound this season. Our total pick is. Over 8. And here is why. The Tigers entered this season hoping to take a step forward, but are having an awful season, and look poised to once again trade away key players at the deadline. The Tigers are turning to Rony Garcia as their starter who has struggled this season, allowing 23 runs in only 43.1 innings pitched. Moreover, with a .307 expected opponent batting average, a .642 expected opponent slugging percentage, and a 6.93 expected ERA, opponents are making hard contact and driving in runs at will against Garcia. The Giants are putting together a strong season and hope to once again compete for the division title. Alex Wood has been a reliable starter in the rotation, but is having a rough season, allowing 39 runs in 67.2 innings pitched. In addition, with a .272 expected opponent batting average, a .439 expected opponent slugging percentage, and a 4.03 expected ERA, opponents are constantly making contact off of Wood and plating base runners as a result. The Tigers' lineup has been awful this season, making it easy to think that the upcoming game will be a low-scoring one. However, the Giants have been carried by their batting order all season, and both lineups look to step up against two struggling starting pitchers. The Tigers lineup should step up and attack Alex Wood, who allowed six runs in his previous start, with Miguel Cabrera, Harold Castro, and the rest of the batting order making contact and plating base runners as a result. The Giants, who average 4.89 runs per game, should run up a score with Jock Peterson, Wilmer Flores, Darren Ruff, and the rest of the lineup powering the ball and making hard contact off the Tigers' pitching staff to drive in runs throughout the game. The over should cover in a high-scoring game with both lineups stepping up. Seattle Mariners vs Baltimore Orioles Baltimore Orioles for the win, and here is why. The Baltimore Orioles have scored 12 runs in their last three games and four or more runs in six of their last ten games. 
the Orioles have won five straight games when scoring four or more runs. Austin Hayes leads the Orioles with 77 hits and 45 RBI, while Cedric Mullins and Trey Mancini have combined for 148 hits and 57 RBI. Austin Voth gets the ball, and he is 0-0 with a 7.81 ERA and 28 strikeouts this season. This will be Voth's first career game against the Mariners. The Seattle Mariners have scored five runs in their last three games and three or fewer runs in seven of their last 11 games. The Mariners have lost 10 of their last 12 games when scoring three or fewer runs. Ty France leads the Mariners with 87 hits and 45 RBI, while Julio Rodriguez and J.P. Crawford have combined for 147 hits and 54 RBI. Chris Flexen gets the ball, and he is 3-8 with a 4.31 ERA and 55 strikeouts this season. This will be Flexen's second career game against the Orioles. Chris Flexen is probably the more reliable pitcher of the two, but he's been hittable all season, and the Mariners haven't had a ton of success with him on the mound. Austin Voth has allowed nine hits and three runs in nine innings since coming over from Washington. These teams are both playing good baseball. It's hard not to lean toward the O's and the plus money here. This is closer to a toss-up game. Our total pick is. There hasn't been much to cheer about in Baltimore for some time. The franchise has ranked among the worst in baseball over the past five years with a string of 100-plus loss seasons. However, it appears the tide may be finally starting to turn. Despite their current last place positioning, the Orioles have been far from the pushover of years past, competing night in and night out. After an impressive 5-1 stretch over their last six games, the club has clinched their first winning month since 2017. After a strong showing out of the gate in April, not much has gone right for Seattle as they have nose-dived down the Al West standings all the way into fourth place. They enter Wednesday 13 games adrift of first place Houston. While the future remains bright, their present outlook has dimmed considerably over the past several weeks. With plenty of baseball still remaining, they will try to get back on track and into the mix in the Al wildcard race. While both teams are wash and young talent it is not really translated on the stat sheet just yet. It still appears both of these teams are a year or more away from reaching their full potential. Both teams rank in the bottom 10 in the league in runs, scored with Baltimore ranking 21st and Seattle 26th. The under has been a steady trend for both teams of late going 7-1 in the Orioles' last eight and 4-1-1 in the Mariners' last six. While this is far from a marquee pitching matchup, expect the offenses to struggle to produce once again.